I thought it was really important because we had potentially internal and external candidates that the process be highly transparent, uh, that um, no staff person um, or a close stakeholder partner to Columbia uh, feel at sea not knowing is what's going on, is there a process, is some, you know, who's in charge of the process, what's happening. And so I sent out probably way more communications about the process than anybody wanted to see, uh, knowing that in destabilized times, my motto is over communicate by a factor of 10, till they just say, stop, I don't want to hear any more about the process. Um, so we tried to do that and we empowered the staff to have a role. Um, seven person committee horizontally integrated geographically and integrated and diverse. Same thing with the um, advisory group of 11 um, with nine external stakeholders. And the key thing about the advisory group, which is so great for whoever was going to get chosen, is that the people um, were s close stakeholders on the ground in advocacy. This was not a gathering of positional authority executive directors. This was people who work shoulder to shoulder with the advocates on the staff at Columbia and really know the work of Columbia and what Columbia's unique role is in partnership with the others in the Alliance. So we're able to pull that off and the board is very savvy to all of this. It's a great board. Um, and so I think that at the end, the comments from the board were how even though they initially thought they shouldn't do a search, they were wrong and that this had strengthened the program and also the person who was selected, who was Murph. So let's get to Murph for a second. So it was a very competitive process in that I would say, I've been through dozens and dozens of these processes. I was the person who was delegated to do the uh, reference checks. So there'd be a uniform checklist and set of questions and one person hearing the answers and interpreting them in the same way. Um, of all the 25 years that I've been on search committees and check people's references, these by far for each of the candidates were the deepest, most high quality references I've ever checked. The people knew their candidates inside and out. They knew their cases, their work, they knew their humanity, they knew their humility. They had very specific examples of how the person lived their humility and led um, using uh, extreme high levels of emotional intelligence and um, just like John Midgley, who is my role model of an other directed person, sometimes two other directed, but you know, he's never not scanning for what the effect of what he's doing is going to have on other people. And that is a rare, rare thing. All three of these candidates had it in spades, which was remarkable really. And um, so that made the process feel very um, sound in many, many ways that we had scooped up three top quality advocates who are committed and dedicated to the cause. Um, in terms of Murph, her unique lived experience as a person who has lived in poverty, who has suffered through all of the structural ways that people who are poor um, face additional obstacles and hurdles to achieving their potential and yet overcoming all of those using her humor, her humanity, um, and her ability to communicate in an authentic way were heads and shoulders above the other candidates. And then when you get to her work, that would be leg two, you know, one would be these qualifications. Then if you get to her work, um, the hallmark of Columbia is multi-forum, full range advocacy because it's one of the only entities that can do it. So working in the legislative arena, litigation, administrative rulemaking, the form of public opinion communications, community-based lawyering, community partnering, uh, governmental partnerships to get laws changed, um, the intersectionality between race and poverty, pushing the race equity agenda, um, and leading the way for the organization in, in spite of white fragility and pushback, which is predictable and unavoidable in any Thing involving humans, uh, all of us living in this sort of toxic racialized environment, um, her ability to just wade into the deep end of the pool and have an exceptionally high level of skill on that, um, just out of the park on leg two. And then finally on leg three, 
which isn't specifically about MRF, but it is a factor that the board and I think the staff um, uh, weighed in on, which is the stabilization of the program. So somebody who's an insider could be a horrifying choice, but in this case, um, very happily and fortunately turned out to be what everybody could universally see as a stabilizing de decision by the board. So on all three counts, um, I would say it's uh, a pretty magical ending to a, a very, very comprehensive, intense process. And every member, so if you think seven staff uh, people, nine external people, and eight board committee members, that is a lot of people. They all respected the confidentiality when that was essential. Um, they all um, shouldered a lot of responsibility for wading through materials, for being on endless calls, being full day in interviews, debriefing calls. It's amazing what all of those people contributed to the process. And I think Murph's um, directorship will be strengthened by the process. She's contributed to it, but the process itself will also be the wind under the program's wings and hers as well.